Hi everyone, and welcome back. I have one more lesson for you on manipulating power series. Up to now, we've seen that many functions can be related back to one of the four building block functions, sine x, cos x, e to the x, or one over one minus x, using transformations like differentiation, integration, and substitution. If we remember the Maclaurin series for those four building block functions, we can efficiently compute Maclaurin series for many, many related functions. Now there's actually a fifth building block function that I think is worthwhile to keep in mind, but its Maclaurin series is a little bit more complicated, so I've saved it for the end. The Maclaurin series is known as the binomial series, and it's very much related to the binomial formula that you may have learned in high school. As a little review, if you're given a positive integer m, any positive integer you like, then the binomial formula gives you a way to expand this expression 1 plus x to the m. The formula says that you can write this as the sum from 0 to m of m choose n x to the n. What's this m choose n expression? Well, it's given by this quotient of factorials, m factorial divided by m minus n factorial n factorial. Notice that these coefficients can be simplified by canceling some terms in the numerator and denominator. Specifically, this m factorial term includes the factors 1, 2, 3, all the way up to m minus n. That is, it's divisible by m minus n factorial. If you cancel that term from the numerator, you're left with m, m minus 1, m minus 2, all the way down to m minus n plus 1, divided by n factorial times x to the n. Well, now check this out. This expression looks a lot like a Maclaurin series, right? We have powers of x together with some coefficients. Well, this is a Maclaurin series. It's the Maclaurin series for the function 1 plus x to the m. Now, we've carried out this analysis assuming that m is a positive integer, but it makes sense to ask for the Maclaurin series for this function even when m is not an integer. What if m is a half? then we'd be asking for the Maclaurin series of the square root of 1 plus x. It turns out that even when m is not a positive integer, the Maclaurin series for this function very closely resembles our binomial formula. It's not going to stop at some finite number m, because after all, that would give us a polynomial, and the function on the left would not be a polynomial, but rather the sum contains infinitely many terms. That change aside, however, the terms look identical to what you see here. That Maclaurin series is known as the binomial series. Let me show you on the next slide. Okay, here it is, folks. The generalization of the binomial formula to exponents that are not positive integers. If you give me any real number m that's not a positive integer, then the Maclaurin series for the function 1 plus x to the m is given by this infinite sum, which we refer to as the binomial series. You'll notice that the terms of this series are identical to those in the binomial formula. We now just have infinitely many of them. Sometimes I find it a little easier to think of this series by just writing out the terms. 1 plus mx plus m, m minus 1 over 2 factorial, x squared, and so on. As an exercise, try to show that the radius of convergence of the binomial series is r equals 1. Just like for every other power series we've worked with, you can show that this is the case using the ratio test. As you'll see in the example that follows, the binomial series can be very useful when dealing with expressions that involve roots. In this example, I'd like to use the binomial series to find the first three terms in the Maclaurin series for this function, the cube root of 64 minus x to the 4. Okay, if we're going to use the binomial series, we should probably start by rewriting this expression to look more like the function from the last slide. 1 plus x to the m. Here I can see that I have an expression raised to the power of a third. So let's write this down. The cube root of 64 minus x to the 4 is equal to 64 minus x to the 4 to the 1 third. Okay, I've got my exponent, m equals 1 third, but I want the inside to look a little bit more like 1 plus something. Here I don't have 1, I have 64. So I'm going to factor that out of this expression. I get 64 to the 1 3rd times 1 minus x to the 4 over 64 to the 1 3rd. I had to borrow 64 here, right? Okay, we're almost there, except here I have 1 minus something. I want 1 plus something. So I'm going to group that minus with the x to the 4 term. 
I get 64 to the 1 3rd, which is 4, times 1 plus minus x to the 4 over 64, all to the 1 3rd. Ah, okay, now check this out. This is in exactly the right form for me to use my binomial series. I have 1 plus something, in this case, minus x to the 4 over 64, all raised to some power m, in this case, 1 3rd. To use the binomial series, I'm going to leave that 4 alone, but inside the brackets, I have 1 plus mx. Remember, m here is 1 3rd, and my x is really minus x to the 4 over 64. Minus x to the 4 over 64. My next term would be m, m minus 1 over 2 factorial. So that's 1 3rd, 1 3rd minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared. But again, my x is really minus x to the 4 over 64. And then the series continues. If you simplify these first three terms, you should be left with 4 minus 1 over 48 x to the 4 minus 1 over 9,216 x to the 8. And then, of course, the series continues. But here are your first three terms. As a bonus, what's the radius of convergence of this series? Well, we use the binomial series, which has a radius of convergence 1, except instead of x, we had minus x to the 4 over 64. So our series will converge, provided that minus x to the 4 over 64 is less than 1 in absolute value. That is, the absolute value of x to the 4 is less than 64. By taking fourth roots on both sides, we find that the series will converge when the absolute value of x is less than 2 root 2. So 2 root 2 is our radius of convergence.